hey guys so in the last lecture we have seen the length of open belt drive and i have just drawn the figure for the length of cross belt drive so today we will see the length of cross belt drive so as you can see there is a dri driving pulley and this is driven pulley so this is moving in clockwise direction and therefore this will move in anti clockwise direction because the belt is crossed so the objective of this uh, cross belt drive is to reverse the direction of the uh, driven pulley so as you can see that the belt is crossed uh, so the angle of contact will change here so the angle of contact of the driving pulley will be the same but the further driven pulley will be changed so suppose i am saying that the point of contact for the driving driving pulley here is o1 uh, that is center then point of contact is g and e g and e and here point of contact for driven pulley is h and f and the center is o2 so here the angle extended from the uh, from the vertical axis to the point of contact is alpha and similarly here this angle will also be alpha so we have to find the length of all pulley drive so the, let's say the total length of the pulley drive be l so here i am saying the total length is l let's say the radius r1 is the radius of the bigger pulley and r2 is the radius of the smaller pulley and x is the distance between the pulley so the x is nothing but o1 o2 so o1 o2 distance is x so let's find out the length of this belt drive so uh, to find out the length of the belt drive we know that total length l will be equal to first arc uh, let me see this point as j and this point as k so arc g j e arc g j e it is arc g j e arc plus arc f this is f f k h so this is h so arc f k h it is arc f k h plus ef it is plus ef plus gh so as you move from here so arc jje plus ef plus fkh plus gh so that is the length of the whole uh, cross belt drive now as we know that that arc gje so arc gje is nothing but a uh, two times arc je so this arc length will be similar to the arc length of this similarly this arc length will be similar to this arc length so i can write two times and further the, this length is similar to this length so i can further write here is that two times arc je two times arc je plus two times arc hk 2 times arc hk plus i can say 2 times ef 2 times ef so i can take two common and our length will be this now we have to find all these three parameters here so let's uh, st start with first uh, arc j so what is arc j so i am taking two as common so arc j is uh, what is the formula for arc so arc is equal to radius into angle so uh, what is this angle for j so it is 90 degree plus alpha so it will be pi by 2 plus alpha it is pi by 2 plus alpha into radius that is r1 plus 2 times hk hk what is the angle here so here uh, the angle for hk is again 90 degree plus alpha so here it will be 2 times 
2 times is common so here also pi by 2 plus alpha into r2 plus ef so what is ef now what is ef so let's uh, extend let's see the triangle it is right angle triangle so suppose i extend this line here and extend the parallel line from parallel line of ef to the center to the center of the axis so let's say so this line so this line i am saying that this is suppose m so this mo2 will be equal to ef so mo2 will be equal to ef now this creates a 90 degree here but this creates a 90 degree here so i can write here mo2 instead of ef but what is mo2 i want to find mo2 so as you can see that this right angle triangle is created here so this is o1 this is o2 o1 o2 and here there is an m at a 90 degree so this is 90 degree and this is m so mo2 we have to find so we can use pythagoras theorem this is hypotenuse so it will be equal to under root uh, o1 o2 square minus m o1 square so it will be under root o1 o2 square that is hypotenuse minus m o1 square now what is o1 and o2 so this o1 o2 is nothing but distance between the centers of the two pulleys that is x so instead of o1 o2 i can i can write x so i can write here x square minus what is m o1 so m o1 m o1 is nothing but uh, that is r1 so this distance this is the radius r1 and this radius is r2 so it is r1 plus r2 so this is r1 plus r2 r1 plus r2 whole square so this is now uh, let's take x as a common outside so if i take x common so here i am left with 1 minus r1 plus r2 upon x whole square so uh, if i expand this with the help of binomial theorem so i will get m o2 is equal to x minus r1 plus r2 whole square upon 2x so now let's put the value of m o2 in this equation so our total length l uh, will be equal to so here pi by 2 plus alpha is common so i can write here uh, as pi by 2 plus alpha into r1 plus r2 into 2 plus now i'm multiplying 2 inside so here 2m2 so here it will be 2x minus r1 plus r2 whole square divided by x so 2 2 gets cancelled so we are left with x here so if i multiply 2 here inside so what i'm left with is l is equal to pi plus 2 alpha into r1 plus r2 plus 2x minus r1 plus r2 whole square divided by x now as sine alpha what is the value of alpha so if you find sine alpha here so what is the value of sine alpha so uh, so this is so this is alpha here so this angle is alpha so if i want to find sine alpha so it will be perpendicular that is o1m upon uh, uh upon base so o1m is r1 plus r2 and this is x so it will be r1 plus r2 divided by x so r1 plus r2 divided by x so as alpha is very very small so we can say sin alpha is nothing but equal to alpha so instead of alpha i can write r1 plus r2 divided by x 
सो अवर टोटल लेंथ एल विल बी पाई प्लस टू टाइम्स डेट इज टू टाइम्स आर वन प्लस आर टू डिवाइडेड बाय एक्स इनटू आर वन प्लस आर टू प्लस टू एक्स माइनस आर वन प्लस आर टू होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एक्स होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय एक्स सो so let's open this bracket so let's multiply this bracket so we are left with here is pi into r1 plus r2 plus 2 times here 2 times r1 plus r2 whole square divided by x plus 2x minus r1 plus r2 whole square divided by x so this 2 times minus 1 times so we are left with here only one times so length will be equal to pi into r1 plus r2 plus r1 plus r2 whole square divided by x plus 2x so this is the value of the length of the cross belt drive in terms of the radius if you want to find this in terms of the Uh, diameter so it will be nothing but pi by 2 d1 plus d2 plus 2x plus d1 plus d2 whole square divided by 4x so we have just used the formula that diameter is 2 times the radius nothing else so radius will be a uh, diameter divided by 2 So we used implemented this formula. So this is the length of the cross belt drive. Now we will see the three laws of belting. So what are the three laws of belting? So the laws of belting are that the law states that the center line of the belt, when it approaches a pulley, must lie in the mid plane of that pulley. So Are the belt leaving the pulley be drawn out of the plane of the pulley? So what it is saying that that non-parallel shafts may be connected by a flat belt drive. So it states that non-parallel shaft, non-parallel shaft may be connected by a flat belt drive. So it should be observed that. it is not possible to operate the belt in the reverse direction without violating the law of belting so you cannot uh, move in reverse direction without violating this law so thus in the case of non parallel shafts thus in the case of non parallel shaft motion is possible only in one direction otherwise the belt is thrown off of the pulley so otherwise it will be thrown off of the pulley however it is possible that to run the belt in either direction on the pulley of two non parallel or intersecting shaft with the help of guide pulley so if you are using a guide pulley uh, you can use in either direction so this law need to be satisfied so these are the main three laws of belting which can be asked for two marks in the exam so now let's see another theory that is ratio of friction tensions is ratio of friction tensions so what is the ratio of friction tensions so this we are using for first flat belt drives flat belt drive for flat belts so suppose this is the pulley and uh, the belt is moving from uh, moving outside from this direction suppose so let me draw the first center axis so these are the center axis so it is leaving from here the pulley sorry the belt the belt is leaving leaving from the center of the axis so uh, there will be tension here t1 and t2 in both the direction of the uh, of the so here there will be tensions in the slack side and on the tight side 
so suppose uh, the angle of lap of the belt or the pulley is theta so the angle of the lap is theta so I am saying that angle of lap so we don't know that how much it is uh, the pulley uh, the belt is lap the angle of the lap of the belt that how much it is lapped so we are considering suppose a small angle d theta as a lap angle so d theta as a lap angle here so we are not considering here 180 degree as the angle of lap but we are considering uh, a small theta d theta now suppose uh, the tension uh, t on the slack side is t suppose on the slack side is t and on the tight side will be greater so let's say it is t plus delta t so this is the slack side and this is the tight side so now this will also create an angle uh, this will also create an angle with the horizontal so this angle is this both angle will be same which will be equal to this angle divided by 2 that is delta theta by 2 it is delta theta by 2 so how this delta theta by 2 came so you have to un uh, understand the geometry here and you can find that why it is delta theta by 2 so now the radius of this pulley uh, is suppose uh, r so r is equal to normal uh, so radius is small r you can say now here here the normal reaction between the element and the belt of the pulley will be capital R. So the reaction force will act in upper upper direction. So the tensions T, so this tensions T and T plus delta T acts in di direction perpendicular to each other. Uh, sorry, perpendicular to the radii drawn at the end elements. So the friction force uh, F will be equal to mu R act tangentially so here the friction force f will be equal to mu r that is coefficient of statics friction into a normal reaction force that is r here so to the pulley resisting the slipping of the elementary on the belt so let's resolve the forces on the left side and on the right side so let's resolve the forces so resolving forces So resolving forces on the left and on the right so what will come here so here the force will be so here the force will be here mu r that is friction force uh, acting plus plus t cos theta by 2 here so here there is a force higher so here friction force is here only so here is the friction force that is mu r plus this uh, t delta theta by 2 it, this t uh, cos theta by 2 is equal to on the right hand side it is t plus delta t on the right hand side it is t plus delta t into cos theta by 2 into cos theta by 2 so here is also cos theta by 2 so if we resolve these forces so we are left with here friction force plus tension force is equal to cos theta delta by 2 plus delta t cos delta theta by 2 so here t cos delta theta by 2 and t cos delta theta by 2 gets cancelled so here we are left with uh, that is So here if we are left with is that is mu r is equal to delta t cos delta theta by 2. So uh, if I make r as a subject that reaction force. So I am left with here delta t by mu cos theta delta theta by 2. So this is the forces resolving horizontally. Now let's. Uh, resolve the forces vertically so this was horizontally now let's resolve the forces vertically so the uh, in 
upward and downward direction here so here in upward direction that is r and downward direction this tangential forces will be in uh, sin theta form so let's resolve first so that is r in upward direction uh, and on the downward direction it is t sin theta by 2 plus t plus delta t into sin theta by 2 so if i open this bracket so this will be 2 times t sin theta delta by 2 so because this is t plus delta t sin delta theta by 2 so the reaction force r will be equal to this term but now let's use the assumption uh, that when theta is very very small when theta is very very small we can say sine theta is equal to theta so here i can say r 2 t t sine delta theta by 2 is equal to delta theta by 2 so 2 2 gets cancelled plus delta t and here delta theta by 2 now so r is equal to t delta theta now this delta and delta so small and small very small so this term can be neglected so r we have got is t delta theta here now uh, here r we have got t delta theta and here r we have got uh, delta t by mu so here also as theta is very very small so we can say that cos theta will be equal to 1 so we can neglect this term so we are left with here 2r that is delta t by mu and here t delta theta so delta t by mu is equal to t delta theta so delta t by t so let's bring t on the one sides so delta t by t is equal to mu delta theta now let's integrate this term uh, from t1 to t2 so we'll get the tension on the tight side and on the slack side whole and here uh, from 0 to theta so there is zero angle to the angle of lap theta so this will be nothing but log that is ln ln t and it will be t1 to t2 is equal to mu theta 0 to theta so this will be ln t2 by t1 so this is ln t2 minus ln t1 so it will be ln uh, t2 by t1 here is equal to mu theta so if i bring uh, mu on the other side so it will be t2 by t1 is equal to e raised to mu theta and sorry here we are not taking from t1 to t2 but from t2 to t1 so i will just replace this term so we are taking here from uh, t2 to t1 so there is t2 to t1 so here t2 so here it will be t1 upon t2 and here it will be t1 upon t2 is equal to e raised to mu theta so this is the ratio of the uh, tensions on the slack side and on the tight side so as why you we have taken here t1 from t2 to t1 because as you can see that t2 is the slack side and t1 is the tight side so we are going from slack to tight and not from tight to slack so here we have taken t2 by t1 so here not uh, anything with the numbering but from the slack to the tight uh, that is the important if we have taken here t1 and here t2 then we have written t2 by t1 so that is slack to the, to the tight side so the above relation is where only when the belt is on the point of slipping on the pulleys so this is the equation so now in the next lecture we will also see the uh, ratio of this tension for the v belt drive v belt okay so thank you very much